Thank you very much for the introduction and thank you very much for the opportunity to present at this meeting. It's an honor to be here. And in the next 10 minutes, I will try to summarize our experience. As you have heard, we ha our experience with FGFR diffusion and novel somatic mutation in cholangiocarcinoma. You also have the poster there. I think it's hard to see, but I will show everything in the presentation, so it will be fine. So just a few words in the background you already, already heard. We focus on intrahepatic cholangiac carcinoma, and this is the second most common liver cancer after patocellular carcinoma. It's a rare cancer, but all it accounts for less than 5% of all gastrointestinal tumors. It's a quite interesting disease, has a really poor prognosis, and a resection representative treatment option to date. For patients more advanced at the stage, uh, chemotherapy regimens are emerging and are now considered standard of, of practice. However, there is no clear um, consensus for the optimal treatment of the disease, and there is a clear need for novel targets to be identified. Interesting, recently fusion events have been discovered also in solid tumors, and in particular, IVGFR fusion have been discovered in um, cholangiocarcinoma as well. Also, as we have heard before in the great talk, uh, we also have novel somatic mutation in chromatin remodeling genes, whereas mutation in KRAS and IDH have been confirmed. We started this project a few years ago, and today is impressed in natural communications. And when we started this project, the hypothesis was that by applying next-generation sequencing, we will be able to identify novel fusion events and also novel somatic mutation that might contribute to the pathogenesis of this cancer, and they might be as novel targets for novel therapies. The specific aims of our project were at first to identify this novel aberration by applying this next-generation sequencing, then to characterize the most interesting in terms of oncogenic potential, and screening a large core to identify the incidence of such fusion or mutations, and finally to verify if this alteration may be novel targets for more effective therapies. Just a few words in terms of methods. We use large core of 114, including a small discovery set where we applied RNA sequencing and exon sequencing. In terms of RNA sequencing, we use seven fresh frozen cholangiac carcinoma, whereas we used eight for exon sequencing, whereas the remaining where 107 paraffin and beticia, that, as you know, is quite a tricky material, and we use this for screening to then understand the incidence of such aberrations. We perform RNA sequencing. We focus on novel fusion events. We characterize the molecular mechanism on the DNA responsible for the generation of our top candidates. We try to understand the oncogenic potential of our top candidate fusion in vitro by using cholangiocarcinomas lines and normal fibroblast. And also, at the end, we try to screen a large core and understand the incidence, as I said before. In terms of axon sequencing, we use eight fresh frozen cholangiac carcinoma as a discovery set, and 107 for screening. We identified, again, somatic mutation. We focus on somatic mutation. We tried to validate all of them by PCR and Sanger sequencing. And in particular, we found a novel mutation in RAF, that is a candid oncogene. And we tried to understand the functional role of this mutations in vitro. Again, we screen a large cohort to understand the incidence. Intrigued by this mutation, also we screen the kinase domain of this protein. And finally, we integrated all these results with our previous published molecular classification. In terms of RNA sequencing, here you have a table with a novel fusion that we identified. Our top candidate is here highlighted in red. It was supported by high number of reads, 149. And we were intrigued because it was between the you know, already famous oncogen FGFR2 and PPH01. At the time when we found this fusion, we were not aware of the other studies because they were published while we were working on it. So we were really curious because at that point there was no fusion involving FGFR2 in solid cancer. According to our fusion, this is occurring between exon 19 of FGFR2 and exon 4 of PPH01. These two genes map on different chromosomes. And in order to validate this call, we perform a simple RT-PCR using primers spanning the, the breakpoint. And we identify only one band in the tumor, what it was called by RNA-seq, whereas its normal counterpart was negative. Also, we validated the sequence around the breakpoint by Sanger sequencing. We were intrigued to see if there was a translocation on the DNA responsible for the generation of this fusion, and we performed whole genome sequencing. As you can see here in the circle plot, there was one fusion that was called between these two genes. This technique allowed us to identify the specific breakpoints in the introns and to define specific primers to further validate the presence of a translocation. At the end, consider that FISH is the most used technique in clinical practice. We also designed probes against FGFR2 
in red and pitchel one in green, and we perform fish. And in the, in the figure on the right, you can see that it was in the tumor, arbor in the fusion, and the two probes were close to each other. This is our protein, and it is composed by 768 amino acid of a GFR2, whereas the remaining up to 100, thousand is uh, up to a thousand is of PPHL1. And as we have demonstrated in our paper, but also other authors have demonstrated the characteristic of this fusion and why we are so excited about these fusions is because the presence of the second partner maintain the fusion, the FGFR2, always active. So the FGFR2 is always activated, it's always activated and it's trans transducing the signal within the cells. So in order to understand if this fusion when present in cells can transform normal cells with respect to normal fibroblasts, we obtained colonies in soft target RSA, as you can see on the left. And when we added a specific FGFR2 inhibitor, in this case we used BJJ398 from Novartis, we observed that it was completely suppressed. Also, we transfected cholangiogenic carcinoma alliance in order to understand the phenotype. And we saw that cholangiogenic carcinoma alliance overexpressed in the fusion were like more proliferating, more proliferating, were more prone to, to create colonies in vitro, and also were, had uh, an increased migratory capacity. Again, when we treated with BJJ398, the cells that were expressed in the fusion were more sensitive to the drug. In particular, the migration on the right was completely suppressed. Of, well, we was reversed to the normal base level of the, of the cell line. In order to understand the incidence of our fusion, we screened 107 cholangiogenic carcinoma cases, and we found that 16% were positive for the same fusion. This, the sequence around the breakpoint was exactly the same, especially because the real breakpoint is in the intron and the, the axon is intact. And we performed again FISH to further confirm the presence of translocation in these patients. As we have heard, other publications have reported FGFR2 fusion in cholangiogenic carcinoma, and in particular, the first was published in Cancer Discovery 2013. It reported two patients out of four with intrahepatic cholangiogenic carcinoma positive for FGFR2 beak, whereas in 2013, in a pathology paper, another fusion has been reported. We were interested in understanding how these fusions are present in our cord, and so we screened our cord for FGFR2 beak, and this was quite frequent, more than what we expected we found that 38% of the patients were positive. This is much higher than what reported in other papers. And interesting, when we checked the overlap between FGFR2 beak and our fusion, we saw they were not mutually exclusive, suggesting that probably different subclones we could do in the tumor are positive for these fusions. And overall, we had 45% of the population was positive for at least one FGFR2 fusion. We have, a no, yeah, it was like 10 patients present both, are positive for both. We don't know the reason. I mean, our speculation is like different subclones within the same tumors are positive, not that both fusion occur in the same cell. But this is a speculation, I don't have proof of that. Then we wanted to understand if uh, other liver cancer are positive for FGFR2 fusion. And beside our intrahepatic cholangiogenic carcinoma, we screened 100 hepatocellular carcinoma, they are here not shown and 21 mixed hepatocellular carcinoma cholangiogenic carcinoma. And we found no cases in hepatocellular carcinoma positive for fusion, whereas we found only one out of 21 that was positive of the mixed tumor, suggesting that this fusion is really specific for intrahepatic cholangiogenic carcinoma. We saw an interesting association between presence of fusion and KRAS mutation, and also activation of KRAS pathways, suggesting it may be a collaboration between, the, a cooperation between these two pathways. Then, we, in parallel, we performed exon sequencing on the same tumors, and we focused on somatic mutation. Overall, we found an average of 173 mutations per patient, including SMV and an indels. We focused on the ones affecting the coding sequence, and in particular, the missense one. We had an average of 19 per patient, and the damage in it was 69, almost half of them. And when we look at it, the candidate that we found, we were, we were interested because we found two mutations in a RAF. A RAF belongs to the RAF family, it's a candidate oncogene, but only a few mutations have been reported so far in this gene. In our case, we found a two mutations in a RAF. The first was occurring in this regulatory domain, position 217, that has been described. Mutation in, in hotspot really is close to 217, has been recently described in lung cancer and the responsible of activation, whereas the other mutation was occurring in PK kinase. In order to understand the function of this two mutation with respect to the cholangiogenic carcinoma line, 
And as you can see here, in the Western blot, we observe an activation of the downstream pathways. And we compare this, for example, to classic mutation in BRAF. And interesting, the mutation in the hotspot 217 was also able to induce proliferation of chondric carcinomas in line in vitro. Consider that the RAF is not really well known and the whole different mutation will be reported. We have screened the PK kinase by Sanger sequencing, and we found that 11% of the, of the patients present other mutations. The oncogenic potential of these mutations at this point is not known. We assume that they are activated, but actually we are further exploring the oncogenic role of each single mutation in vitro. They were all missense, and they were predicted to be damaging by the polyphen 2 software. At the end, we tried to give a genomic portrait of the disease. And to do this, we integrated our results with the previous published molecular classification. In 2013, we were lucky enough to publish this paper that was based on the genomic characterization of 149 cholangic carcinoma. And based on the gene expression profile, we identified two different subclasses that we named proliferation subclass and inflammation subclass. The proliferation subclass was characterized by enrichment of oncogenic pathways, was patients with really poor prognosis. The prognosis was much poorer in the proliferation subclass versus the other subclass. And interestingly, we tried to map everything to see if there was an enrichment in any of the subclasses. But when we look at FGFR2 fusion, we didn't see any enrichment in, the, in, any, in any subclass. And overall, as I said before, we had 45% that were positive for at least one fusion. Association with Keras mutation, we had only 10%, but there was a strong association with these two pathways, and further exploration is needed to understand what's going on between Keras and FGFR2 fusion. IDH1 and 2, as we heard before, in our quarter was 17%. We had an enrichment in two subgroups of the proliferation subclass that has, as Nabil said before, the, these tumors are enriched with stem cell future based on genomic profiling. So it was quite interesting, the IDH mutation enrichment in these subclasses. In terms of prognosis, in our course, there was no correlation with prognosis at all. In terms of BRAF mutation, we have 4%. A RAF mutation is, let's say, 11%. The oncogenic potential of the new mutation identified is still under exploration. We have epidermal growth factor mutation in 2%. And finally, high-level notification at 11Q13, where there are like oncogenes like second one FGM19 are mapped, was in 4%. Interesting, overall, we had that almost 70% of the patients are at least one targetable molecular alteration. And in conclusion here, by conducting novel Generation, sequ generation sequencing, we have tried to provide a genomic portrait of the disease. We have identified a novel somatic mutation in the RAF, and in particular, a novel transforming and oncogenic fusion in FGFR2. FGFR2, PVH1 fusion, was transforming and oncogenic in vitro, and cells that were expressed in this fusion were more, res more responsive to the treatment with specific FGFR2 inhibitors. Also, in terms of HRAF mutation, we found the somatic mutation that were activated, and in one case, also promote proliferation of cholangic carcinomas in line. And finally, integrated with our previous molecular classification, we found that 70% of patients are with at least one molecular alteration and might respond to specific targets. Last but not least, I would like to thank all the, co the collaborators. Our group in New York, like a School of Medicine in Mount Sinai, my mentor, Joseph Lovett, and all of you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. That was an excellent presentation. To start off, I think the point of interest for all of us was this incidence of FGFR fusion. You know, uh, I thought it was more in single digits, and certainly 40% is pretty striking. Yes. Uh, it's different from what Laura reported, and also different from the paper in Cancer Discovery and several. Do you have any explanation for that? I don't have a clear explanation. We try to understand why our incidence is so different from the other papers. The cancer discovery was the first. They only had four cholangic carcinoma, and they found in two out of four, so it's a rough statistic, 50%. Then we had the hepatology, that was 13%. And we tried to compare with other studies, but the lack of detailed information about the clinical characteristics of patients make it really hard. So we could compare our study with the hepatology in 2013, and we can say that maybe geographic location, because our uh, Caucasian patients, whereas in the case it was like from Asia. This is the only thing that I could think of at this point. I need more information about their cohorts. So I'm gonna ask Randy Isaacs. Uh, Randy, you've led the development of BGJ398, and, I'm, and no doubt you are heartened to see that response there. 
additional colleague about these data just as, as it's coming, coming off the press. Um, so your question, yeah, Millen. You've done a lot of research on the GFR genes and generation genes. Yes. Now, is this about, is this type of genes that you looked at in Sweden and I That is correct. Um, so we are in collaboration with, with the group at Mount Sinai. Um, and, you know, in our clinical trial, and I'll present some data tomorrow, Obviously, the patients are presenting with certain um, fusions, but this is not one that we've, we've actually seen frequently. The problem is that the, it's all about the assay. So if you're not using the appropriate assay, you're not going to find the fusion. And I think that's the biggest issue and something that perhaps we can, you know, we can discuss tomorrow is you can't use a one-off assay um, that only looks for one fusion and expect to find you know, the whole variety. Um, so the uh, Our discovery set was fresh frozen, but the, the screening was paraffin and tissue. This is why we design probes for fish, because in paraffin and tissue fish, I think it's easier, whereas RNA sequencing still is not there with paraffin and tissue. Um, yes, yeah, so I was wondering if the coincident mutation or translocation in the same tumor of different FGFR fusions suggests a field defect and then the second question is whether you have a sense of the allele frequency. Um, Dr. Roberts, I think, has a paper where he used fish to screen a lot of patients. And in the tumors that had translocations, he showed virtually all the epithelial cells in the tumor were positive for the translocation, so a very high allele frequency. I was wondering if you can comment on that. Uh, yeah, we perform fish, so I, I cannot say if it's like, FG, our FGFR 2 p one is definitely there because we perform fish and our probes were specific for both genes, whereas for FGFR 2 b we did RT-PCR and Sanger sequencing. In terms of allele frequency, I cannot say we didn't found, find the presence of fusion in 100% of the cells. This is something that is, I can say. I don't know about, it's like, I cannot be more specific about that, but we had like a quite wide range from 20% to 80% of the cells. And then I guess one um, uh, also related question is the coincident driver mutations in MAP kinase type, PI3 kinase lesions, in other words, KRAS and FGFR, how much precedent is there for that in other cancer types? Uh, it's an interesting yeah, dual I'm driver. Uh, I'm not aware of that, but in cholangiac carcinoma, it will be interesting in case yes. of resistance to treatment. So we'll take one last question, Eric, because, because uh, uh, the, in this session, there's uh, a lot of, uh, the, the, in this the conference, there's going to be a lot of discussion of, on FGFR, yeah. so I'm sure there'll be plenty of opportunity. That, that was, uh, Nabil's question was mine too, is, 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 is this a MAP kinase activating event and, and do you, did you look where the FGFR fusion resides in the cell? Is it membranous or? No, we haven't. We, this is now our plan, but we haven't done it yet. Thank you, Daniela. And